Hi, good morning everybody. Uh, trying to make the pain of standing a little bit more acceptable. Um, if I can have the first slide please, whoever's driving the slides. Oh, okay, right. Mine, uh, Nobody! <laughs> you stay use the Fantastic. That's me then. Um, I brought along a prop because uh, it wouldn't be a presentation from me if I didn't have a prop and it's here on my hand. Anybody who wants to see it afterwards, it's an electron. It's very, very, very small and uh, I think it's the, one of the difficulties that we face is that we put these electrons into things like this and we uh, spread them all around the world and we give them to consumers. Not surprisingly then, there's an awful lot of difference, there's an awful lot of steps between making this ele little electron, I think I've dropped it actually, um, making it into a product like this and that's the problem because the industries that are involved in doing that are just so invisible and they're very much involved with the technology of providing knowledge of little pieces of that that jigsaw puzzle, the research, the uh, uh, the electronics, uh, the systems and methodologies associated with doing it, the tools, the subsystems, the components, the methodology for assembling it, the, uh, the keyboards, the LCD displays, and all of that kind of technology is all kind of invisible. And yet it's what we do. And the problem we now face is as far as the community is concerned, how can you really believe this industry even exists, has a significant role in the UK, if you don't actually understand what it does? <coughs> so for that reason, fundamentally to what we were trying to do here was to try and quantify this community because it's all too easy to believe 20 odd years ago that electronics left the UK <coughs> and has not been replaced with anything, so it's actually a story of failure. Those of us who are working in the industry know it not to be the case, however. Um, and, but it's really a difference between us knowing it and us trying to prove it. And so this exercise was really about trying to quantify the people who are involved in electronic systems, um, also the sort of jobs that they were doing, and you'll find the rest of that in the report. But at this stage, at least to put some numbers down about who is employed, how many of them, what sort of businesses they're in, how much are they actually contributing to the economy because otherwise we're just a small and invisible community. Nothing is easy and pinning this particular community down was not going to be easy right from the beginning. So we have however taken a very engineering approach to this. If we can't prove it to ourselves then we can't prove it to anybody else either. So we have tried to be as, as formal and complete as we can be and those who want to pursue the maths and to investigate the databases and to follow the references, they're all there in the uh, Workstream report and in the spreadsheet which is linked to it. So if you have any questions which are not in there, then you can even get back to me and I'll talk to you about it. Um, we use these two databases, the FAME database and the IDBR database. The IDBR database contains confidential information about the tax that you and I and so on pay. Uh, therefore we couldn't use the information individually but we could use it collectively. Nevertheless, from that exercise we were able to identify all of the community, the electronic systems, businesses, the activities that are working on it, but also the activities of people working in other industries, known particularly for something else. So the, uh, the retail industry, the transport industry and so on, who are all heavily dependent on electro electronic systems but if you were to just look at those as jobs and, and business activities, you wouldn't say they are fundamentally electronic systems businesses. Um, we made use of the skills of the University of Manchester Department of Economics. I'm not, an, I'm not an economist, but I know a man who is. And the good thing about being an engineer is you're used to working in teams to get something done. And so working with a department of economics to achieve this was actually a very reasonable thing to do. And of course, as I say, the, the the uh, confidential uh, access to those databases was with the assistance of BIS. And we su su supplemented with data from other reliable sources and of course Excel and no report will be complete without Excel. And you can get your hands on it as well on the website. So to the key findings. Firstly, as we suspected, electronics has not left the UK, although it has evolved into a sector which is best described as the UK electronic systems sector. It's a significant employer. Nearly 3% of the UK workforce, some 860,000 people, are employed in electronic systems activities and the businesses associated with them. Collectively, it's delivering around 5.4% 
some 80 billion pounds of contribution to the UK GDP. Of course, this means it, it is much bigger and more successful than it ever was. And with 5.4% of GDP arising from just 3% of its working population, it's clearly highly productive. Furthermore, we believe it's in good shape for the 21st century global market opportunity that this sector now presents. Principally, there are two value prospects, and this is the value prospect one, the electronic systems enterprises themselves. So here we've got the businesses who are essentially technical businesses. They're doing stuff with technology and they're delivering technology to another business who needs technology to do stuff with it to, and so on and so on until you end up with something like this or your electronic system, not all of which are visible, of course. And what we found is there are 30,000 enterprises in the UK doing this stuff. 30,000 for an essentially invisible community and they're employing 435,000 people. Now, it's interesting that we, we are actually able to, using these databases, identify the actual people. So these are real people employed in the UK by those companies. So these are not company, these are not employees, half of which are in Taiwan or somewhere remote. These are the UK employees of those 30,000 enterprises. So it's very real. <coughs> It's interesting to note that 50% of the employment is in, in the 250 companies whose average size is 1,180. So these are actually surprisingly big companies. Interesting to make a comparison there when you see that nationally only 22% of the employment is in the category of that size, greater than 250, whereas we've got nearly 50% of the employment in this area. This is not a, a story of failure, of struggling to exist. These are big, successful companies, just invisible. <clears throat> it's interesting to note, though, that there's an awful lot of still small enterprises. We mustn't ignore these, because the big companies are the ones which are going to provide a baseload for today. But the small enterprises are the ones who are pushing forward technology frontiers and presenting great growth opportunities. So they are an, in an integral part of this. The second value prospect is the, the electronic systems which are embedded in other businesses. These are more difficult to pin down by actual names, although we have methods in our, in our future which we hope to employ to do that. Uh, but nevertheless, there's 420,000 people there employed across the 440,000 businesses uh, which actually have electronic systems activities. It's interesting to note that there's still 2 million businesses out there that don't really have any electronic systems roles embedded in them. And how much of a penalty are they paying for that? Because the bigger businesses are the ones that do have it in there. So the obvious factor there is electronic systems is also going to be fundamental in the growth in this area too. Well, obviously we have to publicize the nature and the success of this community because it's not a failure, it's a success. And we're doing very well internationally. We have to establish, however, the value prospect of this. Excuse me while I just go back a slide. No, I didn't talk about it. Um, the income method is, an, is a method for uh, establishing the value attributable to that employment. The income method comes out of standard economic theory, and it does actually enable us to, uh, uh, to assign a GDP uh, value to each one and every one of those people's contribution, which is a bit novel. It's not, however, inno it's not innovative in the sense that it's not fundamentally uh, different from the methods which are used in, in, in economics. It's just not the popular one, which tends to focus on the production method. Um, <clears throat> so we're all very keen to see what the, uh, the next data point will give us. This is due on the 5th of July. Uh, to tell us where, where this industry is heading, where this sector in the UK is heading. Uh, we're fairly confident that it's heading in an upward direction, but for a, an industry which is essentially invisible, to be here and to be doing as much as it is, is very credible. Thank you very much.